there is no way I can convey. I can't even put into words how it, how it is that everybody was just there. It didn't matter who I was, what I've been through, why I, why I was there. It mattered that I was Crystal and these were my children and you wanted to be there for me. And it just, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just an amazing feeling to feel like you belong somewhere when you have nowhere to belong. on your side it's your first time meeting us and you would like to know about us but it's maybe the 30th time we're getting asked the same question over and over and there's some good days for us there's some bad days for us you know and just take that into consideration some of us like oh, I'm a talker I like to talk a lot and but um maybe let the guest initiate maybe they want to offer information maybe they're don't, you know. Basically, I would say be careful how you approach a person. Um, this, it's your stranger, <laughs> first of all, to them, and especially if they don't have family here, you know, they they might be a little skeptical. So, um, I would think the best way to introduce just introduce yourself and let them open up to you. You know, sometimes they want to share their soul with you, but just to be a listener, not to be critical. Uh, be helpful, ask uh, if there's anything you can do for them. You're probably not their first experience, you know. Many times the guests will make you feel comfortable. But yes, it's just a matter of relax. It's just some more people there, visit with them, you know, let them take the lead. They'll tell you what they're gonna tell you. And, and just that there is somebody there that cares about them. Yeah, you avoid things like where are you from, or where are you living, or uh, you know what happened, or, or those kinds of things. Just greet them, always greet them with your name first, and that gives. And if sometimes they, you know, and then you say, "And what's your name?" If and and how do you like to be addressed? I, I was very shy, didn't know, you know, what to expect from the volunteers. And I met a couple of volunteers when I first went to the church, and they were very, very warm very caring, loving, um, they didn't pry. Um, it was almost just like a, it was almost like a family. You, you almost, you just walked into a very loving place. Um, you know, they talked to you like you were a normal person. They didn't judge you. They weren't, um, they didn't tell you how to parent. They didn't tell you what you need to do, what not to do. They gave you a lot of encouragement, a lot of encouragement. That's the main key, just listen. You don't necessarily have to say anything, just listen. That's all, that's all guests need, just to have a listening ear. Because that's one thing that um, I was afraid I wasn't gonna have. And here I turn around and that's exactly what I got. I feel like it's nothing wrong with generally coming up and speaking, you know, hi, my name is Guap and you know, whatever. and. If you need anything, then I'm here, you know, and, and leave it at that at the time. Because like I said, you already have a lot on you. You're already tired. You're carrying these bags. Then you have your kids. And we all know sometimes our kids can be so precious. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. Uh, some of the facilities don't provide private rooms. In our church, we use partitions. And privacy is very limited. And everybody, everybody needs time to be able to go on their own, whether it's to deal with things themselves, just have quiet time. It, it's very important. Sometimes the volunteers just got a little bit too much in your space a little bit. You know, like sometimes you need to bag back and give people their own space because, like I said, you have major mood swings. I know I did. Like you'd be happy one time, then you're sad, and it's like you don't want another person that you don't even know, like, all in your space. You know, you want your own little space. There are two different kinds of families, I think. Some of them that do leave almost immediately after dinner, and we, we cannot be offended by that. And then some of them 
I, I had one family that they would have stayed up every night until we, in fact, until we told them, you need to go to bed because they love to play cards and interact. Um, so I think you have to take, take their temperature by where they're at. We absolutely give them as much space and as much privacy as they require. Um, you know, we always knock before you go into the room. Even though some guests will say to you, yeah, just come on in whenever you, you know, if you, if you had a conversation about something, say, yeah, just come on in. Always knock. You never know. Be sure that you give them their, their space. They have their, their room uh, assigned to them. You know, knock on the door, don't walk in. <laughs> and uh, if they're not ready to talk, just leave them alone, let them be by themselves. Sometimes they like that to just you know, go off in their room and stay there for the evening. It, it doesn't mean that they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> it's nothing against you, but you know, we all have that, those times when we want to be alone. There were times that it was difficult for her at the beginning because when there were kids coming in, she would be scared that maybe they'd go to her school. And there were times at the beginning that she didn't even want to get out of her, of the room. And until she kind of like gradually, kind of like graduated from that stage. But, but at first it was difficult because it's not something you might want to deal with when you're in middle school. Everybody has unique parenting styles. Um, if you don't agree with something or something really bothers you, then you bring it to the coordinator or the coordinator brings it to the director of the program and you let them handle it and approach the guest. But co confronting the guests or the guest confronting the volunteers one-on-one -on -one is not a good idea. It's really good to have kids get involved um, like Ashley's age because they can actually sometimes help to draw the kids out you know, and they see other kids come and participate. And when you participate as a family, sometimes I key in on the young guys and Ian will go and talk to them because they don't necessarily want to talk to a, a female, you know, <laughs> or they don't think we can relate. Sometimes kids will be kids. It is like, well, do you want to play cards a little bit longer? And you know, they'll be like, well, they, mom, they said that I could play cards. And no, I said, you have to go to bed. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, it's good to, to kind of like respect that, you know, they have a set of rules with us before they have a set of rules with the program also. You know, just, just be there, just sit and talk with them a little bit. Uh, you know, my kids are older, you know, at, at the time, so uh, it's, it's different when it comes to older kids and little kids. You know, little kids, they, some of them might understand what's going on, but the older kids have more of a grasp on the reality that, hey, we don't have a home. You know, and it's, um, it's a very difficult thing for, for them to deal with. You know, they've been through a lot. The, the moms and the dads are the parents and not the, the IHN hosts or people that are working with the program. You want to you wanna be with them, help them, pay attention to them, but you're not their parent. And it's sometimes tough to understand what that parenting style is and, and you know, let that be the guide. You, you gotta be sensitive, basically, um, and not, and, and also not pry into sort of what's into what their lives are about. If they want to talk about something, by all means, let them and listen. And be, be sort of sensitive to how you respond to what they say. I think trying to, to just think of everybody who's in the space at the same time as being there together, rather than referring to, uh, you know, them and us, that they're here and and, and separating that out and just if when you use someone's name instead of a label or you use a name instead of a pronoun then they're people and when you're talking to the guests to talk to them about our space as their home you know if they need something from the kitchen if they need something from their room giving that kind of direction it just it becomes more inclusive and it doesn't separate out that that they at this moment are are homeless
the job thing. You know, it's it's hard already because it's you know jobs are very low right now, and then it's like, well, what are you doing, and and when you you know when you think you're gonna get a job and all that, like you can't really answer that question, like. If I knew that, then I really probably wouldn't be here, you know? There are people who don't feel like they want to talk. Um, maybe they're just in too tough of a state. Maybe they're not people who love sharing their innermost emotions and feelings. And I think you don't push. You don't make believe or assume that you know more because you do have a home and have food. Because if you believe again that you're all the same, then you have to be able to respect those boundaries and not dig into someone's life uh, who doesn't want to have their life dug into. Uh, and there's, there can sometimes be a patronizing aspect to this. When you go to volunteer, immediate things to come to mind are kindness, guest-centered, so what is it the guests want to do, and just unconditional love. I'm a single mother, so pushing and prying about how come their father's not there, or why is he not there, is he ever going to be around, has he passed away, that's too much, that's too prying, and that's that's hard because as a single mother, I think about it every day to begin with. And then to have you poking and prodding, and then it's hard because as a single mother, you hear it every day from just about every person you meet. So it's hard, and that, I would have to say, would be an off-limits question, one of the, unless I offer it up. Thinking before you speak, um, and given the situation, that, given the, 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 the audience to whom you're speaking, it's not your next door neighbor where you can be a little bit more, you know, relaxed. Uh, it's important to, to think about the families, the guests in your home. I mean, how would, you, how would you behave with a guest in your home? I would just say be sensitive um, about asking people why they came here. That was the main question that we were asked when we were in Interfaith. And, but other than that, volunteers were very welcoming. Uh, we didn't have any bad experiences with anyone. Um, they, I think they, to the best of their ability, they did the best that they could do to the best of their ability. It changes your life. The IHN, is, and that's the only thing I can say, it changes your life. It makes you more humble. It makes you, when you, when you view uh, somebody who's homeless, you view it differently once you've experienced it. I never used to view it the way I view it today. You know, I used to look at homeless people and uh, walking down the street and be like, well, why doesn't he just do something about it? It's, doesn't, it's not always like that. And I learned that through, because I went through this experience. It was like climbing a mountain, you know? You're coming from the valley and you study climbing and climbing, it don't seem like you're gonna ever get to the top but it was the most rewarding thing that could have possibly happened to us when we did finally make it to the top. It is the stepping stone from when you've hit rock bottom. It is, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> um, you're at that place where you can't go anywhere else. You've hit rock bottom and it's almost like you're in this dark place and somebody reaches out a hand. It is the most amazing feeling in the world. It is, you feel like a bad mother. You have two children who you can't feed. You don't have a home for them, and they depend on you for every second of every day. And um, family promises, here, take my hand, it's gonna be okay. And it is okay. Because I like helping children, mostly. When I heard about it, I, I started doing, I started signing up my parents instead of my parents signing up me. <laughs> yes. And when I went to um, church um, last Sunday, um, I signed up me, my dad, my mom, <laughs> and we really enjoy helping other kids. Yes, we do and to admire the families that come through because I think the families that I've seen come through IHN sometimes give me a glimpse in how strong humanity can be because I see them being strong people who 
love their children, who want to do better. And I think if I were in their place, could I do as well as they do? Thank you.